he is an extremely popular person. He's an extremely popular spiritual leader. When we put up online that uh, Swami was going to be a part of this panel, we really couldn't even cope with the number of RSVPs that came in, the amount of requests that came in. And many of them, and uh, surprisingly, many of them came from my community in New Jersey, around Totowa, of which I was very happy about. Anyway, um, the first speaker is um, our Swami. Uh, distinguished members on this panel and uh, my dear friends, 125 years ago in the World Parliament of Religions in Chicago, Swami Vivekananda, speaking about Hinduism, he gave a clarion call for interfaith harmony, interreligious understanding and an end to fanaticism. That was in 1893, September 11th. Uncanny. It is a fact that no religion ever teaches violence, but it is also a sad fact that throughout history, violence has been committed in the name of religion. Other interests, political interests and other interests, often weaponize religion and we as believers, as members of different faiths, as spiritual leaders, we have to be careful that the teachings of our religion, that our religious communities are not in this way weaponized, are not in this way set up against each other. It is very easy to hate. Neurology tells us that we are tribal by nature. And so whatever, or we have a strong sense of in-group and out-group. And unfortunately, religion sometimes fosters that inherent sense. But religion is meant to do just the opposite. Earlier this evening, Rabbi Cass, when I heard him speak, uh, I thought, there goes my talk. <laughs> <laughs> he mentioned Mahatma Gandhi. This year is the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi, the great teacher of peace and nonviolence. <laughs> Speaking about religion, Mahatma Gandhi said, intolerance is in itself a kind of violence. He further said, my religion is truth and nonviolence. Truth is my God, and nonviolence is the way to attain that God. In Hinduism, we find this central teaching that the truth is one, but the wise speak of it differently. Ekam sat vipra bahuda vadanti. One of the oldest scriptures of the world, the Rig Veda, says that the truth is one, the wise speak of it differently. How is it that the same reality, if the truth is one, how can you speak of it differently? Because that reality being infinite, being beyond our human concepts and human language, when we try to express it in human language, then the expressions differ according to time and nationality and culture. And yet we are talking about the same reality. Therefore, we view the religions of the world as different paths to the same reality. They are all valid, they are all true, they are all unique. Indeed, they have to be different because they each has a place in the economy of God. Different paths to the same reality. There is actually no excuse for quarreling. Not just tolerance, but acceptance. Hinduism teaches that not only one must understand and appreciate and revere one's own faith, but also 
one must understand and accept and respect the faiths of others. Somebody asked me, you know, is it okay to believe that my faith is the best? Actually it is. And yet you can respect the faiths of all others. There's a cute, very Indian kind of story which explains this. Um, when the wife comes to the in-law's place, she has a wonderful relationship with her husband and her uh, father-in-law, even mother-in-law, and, uh, <laughs> and, and other in-laws. But her relationship with her husband is special. It is only through her husband that she has relationships with everybody else. In the same way, our relationship to our own faith is special. It has to be special. And yet, it is through that special relationship that we have a wonderful relationship to all other faiths. We are lucky to live in this time when the world has become one village. There's an ancient Indian say, uh, saying which says, the whole world is a nest. And we are all relatives. We all stay in this nest. The dangers of being together are that it may lead to conflict. But there are so many wonderful advantages to it. Today, for the first time, we can say in the history of humanity, we can lay claim to our common shared heritage, which is the spiritual traditions of the whole world. Islam and Christianity and Judaism and Buddhism and Shintoism and Taoism are as much my heritage as Hinduism is. This is today, it's unique that, and this is the place where we can say it. A few weeks ago, a gentleman was telling me the United Nations is a spiritual place. This is the place where the nations of humanity come together for peace and universal well-being. That is the purpose of religion. You know, there are large numbers of people, young people today, turning away from the organized religions of the world. And, and they call themselves the nuns. They, if you ask which religion do you belong to, Christianity or Islam or Hinduism, they say none. And there are large numbers of such people. It's a very, it's the largest, the fastest growing section among young people today. So a, a survey was conducted among these young people in the United States and they were asked, what is it that turns you off religion? You know what's the first thing they said? They said, because they fight among each other. One. Second, it's because they are against the modern values of today. You know, against the values of gender equality, um, uh, against uh, economic and social equality. That's what turns us off. Sometimes they hold on to old and outmoded value systems which clash with our aspirations today. And third, they said that sometimes they say things which are irrational or against science. But note that it is in the interests, in our own interest, in the interests of organized religions that we have interfaith harmony. Young people are turning away from organized religion because they perceive organized religions are at odds with each other. Just as religious intolerance leads to violence, lack of justice and perceived lack of justice also leads to violence. There's another thing that I have been asked to speak about. Social injustice, gender injustice, and economic injustice, they all lead to violence. Um, Sri Ramakrishna, a great Hindu teacher, said that there is no religion on an empty stomach. Uh, poverty kills religion, as the Imam said in the uh, last panel. We have today this wonderful opportunity of coming together for interfaith harmony and peace and to establish justice based on interfaith harmony and peace for the whole world. It is this task that we have in front of us, and I pray to the one reality which is worshipped and approached in all different traditions, that that reality may help us in this great task ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Swami.